good friends, but you're not going to disrespect me uh, by uh, giving me a lot of space. And in that situation, I'm going to shoot it. And then, um, Joel, I'm Joel. I'm Joel. So, you know, I don't get disrespected. I do the disrespect thing. Well, that's a double throw. Wow. That's a throw eclipse. That freaked me out for a moment. It was like excess thrownness. Darren Davis said, you cut your suit coat out of a car of an old pimp Cadillac. And Kansas said, you look like a Rick James backup singer. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. We were really fortunate to win the game. I thought that they outplayed us, uh, outcoached us, outphysicaled us, uh, outexecuted us. It was a pathetic performance. And Phoenix got robbed. It's just basketball, you know, you can play bad or good or in any, any gym, so it's just the same, same game for me. Stat stuffer, and you've heard so much about the Anthony Davis trade rumors that the Celtics have way more to offer than any other team, particularly the Lakers. Well, that starts with what Danny Ainge and his front office has collected in terms of future draft picks. Let's just look at the 2019 NBA draft where the Celtics are going to have one of the best records. So their own draft pick isn't that great on its own. However, they will also have the Clippers first round pick if that is outside the lottery, meaning 15 through 30. They'll have the more favorable pick of Sacramento or Philadelphia right now, very much looking like it would be the Sacramento pick. Also, the Grizzlies first round pick if it's not in the top eight, but then in 2020, it becomes top six protected. Plus, they've got two guys who, while they have taken a statistical step backwards this year, have already proven that they can play big on the biggest stage. These two, Brown and Tatum, were a part of a team in Boston that helped the Celtics, without arguably their two best players last year, get to game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals. Let's take you around the NBA. Celtics at home tonight for Charlotte. Boston comes in winning six of seven. We're joined by B Gary Washburn of the Boston Globe, covering the Celtics each day as well as the entire NBA. And back with us again, Brian Gelsather from Sirius XM NBA Radio. Let's start here. Gary, with Kyrie being out, the hip injury, and we know his long history of knee injuries that cost him the playoffs last year. How concerned should Celtic fans be about Kyrie's health? I don't think very concerned, although I don't know if he'll play Friday in New York. He might be back for that Super Bowl Sunday matchup with Russell Westbrook and the Thunder. I think that's more of a target date. They're going to be careful with Kyrie. I mean, Kyrie's never been one of those 82-game grinders. He's a guy that doesn't mind a day off or two to rest his body. And I think they're using this at this stretch of, of games that they can pretty much win. Um, the other night against Brooklyn, tonight against Charlotte, the Knicks on Friday to give him some rest to make sure he's good for the, for the stretch run. Kelty, we saw Isaiah Thomas after an emotional playoff run and the, being the team's MVP, being in the league-wide MVP conversation, get ousted. Is there any chance you think that Danny Ainge is considering in way of trying to acquire Anthony Davis? That means costing him Kyrie Irving? No, I don't think there's any way because I think Danny Ainge believes he has a team right now that if they hit their stride, can give Golden State anything they every anything and everything they can handle in an NBA final, Jared. And I don't think Danny Ainge is in a hurry to break that up. And I think that he understands that the Pelicans need him in this for them to get the best price possible for Anthony Davis. And if they're going to need him in that to do it, they're going to have to wait to the summer. Danny's going to let this team fly this year and figure out what happens with Anthony Davis as we hit the summertime. It's going to it's going to allow for a lot of things, including them to know where the Knicks land with their pick. It's just smarter for the Pelicans to do it that way. Danny Ainge understands that. He's going to let it fly here with this team and see how far they can go. Gary, do you get a sense that there's any concern in Boston that Anthony Davis won't be available to them come the draft or July 1st? Yeah, I think it's a level of concern because Los Angeles Lakers are kind of in the driver's seat right now. They have the assets. They have draft picks. They can make this quote-unquote mega offer to appease LeBron James right now and get this done before February 7th. Now, will they do that? Will they put that together? And will the Pelicans accept that? That's you know remains to be seen. But, yeah, since they can't really do the, the uh, trade unless they put Kyrie in it, yeah, there's, a sub, there's some, you know, uh, you know, strange feelings right now because they don't really know – they can't really do anything. Um, they can just wait. 
or they can do the handshake wink, you know, deal of, hey, just wait till July 1st. We're going to have something special for you. But does Dale Dimps go for that? I mean, I'm not really sure. That's that's an interesting dilemma. I mean, the Pelicans are kind of in the driver's seat here, but they have some real decisions to make. Gary, can, can we get a look at what your wink wink would look like? What, what would you do? Go ahead. Can you give me the wink? There it is. Yeah. Kelsey, July 1. Can you wink, we'll get Kelsey? back. <laughs> you struggled on that one a bit, Kelsey. Just be a little more natural. Uh, no, that's that's the normal that's the normal wink, man. There you go. A little charm there, Kelsey, right? <laughs> Gary Washburn from the, the Boston best. Globe. Appreciate you joining us. More from Kelsey here in a moment. Let's give you a little this or that on 10 Before Tip. We show you the USA versus the world for the fifth time during All-Star Weekend. The first and second year players in the NBA will be pitted against one another. Here's our USA roster featuring some familiar names like De'Aaron Fox, who will be a candidate for most improved player in the NBA. A guy who's in the running for Rookie of the Year, if it weren't for Luka Doncic running away with it, is Jaron Jackson Jr. Kuzma, we've talked so much about. Tatum and Trey Young is there. Meanwhile, on the world side, you've got notable names like Ayton and Doncic and Markkinen. Guilty this or that? USA or the world? Friday night, All-Star Weekend on TNT. Who you got? Jared, give me the world team. I got a team with Doncic and Ben Simmons together, and I hear you about Tatum and Donovan Mitchell being on the same team, but those are not two guys that exactly like sharing the ball all that much. And I think when you get in these games, and granted, it's a lot of up and down, there's not a ton of defense, but guys that share the ball, to me, are, are just a little more special here. You're looking at that world team, Doncic, Simmons, you know, DeAndre Ayton, and my, my eights in a hole there, I love Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's having a very good year for the Clippers, and that's a terrific young player as well. So, yeah, the world team to me, I think, is holding all the cards as we enter Friday night for the Rising Stars game. Give me your MVP. Of that game? Luca. I think it's going to be, it's Luca's world right now, Jared, and we're all just living in it, man. This kid is 19 year old. He's got the world by the you know what's, man. He, he can do it all. I love this player. He's Luca legend as far as I'm concerned. He's going to play in that game. I can't give it to anybody else but Luca Dungeons. And that is a great segue. That's why you're a professional. Brian Gelsiler, Sirius XM NBA Radio. Appreciate you joining us. Luca the Don is our. Star power, stat stuffer right now. Tonight, he makes his Madison Square Garden debut. Can he do what others have done? Put up big numbers, first time playing in the world's most famous arena. Durant went for 30. You had Carl Anthony Towns going for 25. LeBron's 22 points. Now keep in mind, Luca's season high so far in his rookie year is 35. Can he do better than that tonight at Madison Square Garden? He comes in red hot. Luca over his last Two games has been scoring the basketball. He's put up 67 points, 20 rebounds, 18 assists over the last two. We'll talk more about it as 10 Before Tip presented by Ford continues live on NBA TV. All right, let's tell you about what we've got going on around the NBA tonight. We've got eight games in the association and a lot of big ones that you're going to want to pay attention to. And coming up tonight on Crunch Time at 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll show you the biggest moments of the night as they happen live. We'll take you to each one of these arenas and look at this. There are games with playoff implications with just over 30 games to go with so many of these teams, particularly tonight in the Western Conference. That race for eighth is starting to truly heat up. The teams that are in the gold right now, they're all in action tonight, certainly Denver and Portland, but the big ones, Utah with an opportunity, Sacramento, Minnesota, New Orleans, Dallas, all teams that still think that they have a shot to make the playoffs, they will have big games tonight that we will get you up to speed on during crunch time at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific. Give you a status update and show you who is in, who is out tonight around the NBA. Big one here for the Nuggets as the Nuggets play the Pelicans, and it's unknown if their backcourt will be able to play tonight. Meanwhile, Portland late game against Utah and against Rudy Gobert. They want to have Nurkic in there. He's questionable tonight with a knee injury. Meanwhile, some of the earlier starts tonight, we've told you that Kyrie is out. Expect Terry Rozier to get the start once again. Game time decision for Zach Levine tonight and the Bulls. Meanwhile, Dwayne Wade out once again, and Derrick Rose listed as questionable for this Minnesota team that has been struggling over the last couple of games. Take your court side as we wrap things up on this Wednesday night. Lowry marking in the Chicago Bulls tonight in Miami. Bulls come in having lost four in a row in the last 14 of 15. And here's the really bad news. Bulls on the second night of a back-to-back -back this year, which they are tonight, 
one and six. Meanwhile, Miles Turner and the Pacers looking for win number one since learning that Victor Oladipo is out for the year. They've lost two in a row after winning three in a row. They're in the third spot right now in the Eastern Conference. And Tyreek Evans' injury could be a real problem for the Indiana Pacers the rest of this trip. Again, I'll see you back here on Crunch Time coming up at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific. Stay tuned. Game Time Live is coming up right at the top of the hour.